Welcome everyone to Money and Mindset at 40 Plus. I am Sylvia and this is Jenny. Welcome. Hello. We are so excited to be here. You are witnessing our pilot episode of this show where we hope through our own stories that you will uncover your stories mm -hmm. and that you will conquer your money fears. Yes. Right, Jenny? Money Absolutely. fears so that you can live more a more abundant life. This is what we really, really are aspiring to uh, to share with everybody. Here we are, Jenny. It's live, Sylvia. It's live. I know, I know, but it's exciting when it's live. There's, I feel, there's somewhat even less pressure. But and I, yeah. I, I love the the community yeah. aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're watching, give us a yes in the comments so we know who you are. Yeah. If you have comments. You know, if you like the episode later, we're going to ask you to like it, share it with mm -hmm. your friends, but mm -hmm. definitely put a yes. If you're watching, we'd love to know who are you? What do you do? And this is it. Today's episode is all about uncovering your holes, which is like uncovering your money issues. There's, right? there's been so many holes. Uh, you know, I want to get to that. Um, I want to talk about holes, the Swiss cheese holes, the holes in your relationships, the holes in your money. Um, but Sylvia, why, why are we doing this? What, why, why are we, why are we making this work? Right? Why are we doing this? Jenny and I have known each other. Let's say she was 19 and I was 20. We were at McGill University together for those of you who don't perhaps know these backstories of ours. Mm -hmm. So we have been friends for a long time yeah. and we have gone from music students to careers in music, to management, to fundraising, to I became a doula I, for those of you who don't know that. And now I'm a business coach. Jenny works in fundraising yeah. uh, in the fundraising sphere with nonprofit organizations. Yeah. We have talked about money for years and we have the best conversations. Don't we ever? And they go on and on. They're, they're the ones where uh, nobody wants to hang up. Right, Sylvia? Yeah. 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 Whether it's lack of money. What do I do with this money? Yeah. I don't like my financial advisor. Women and money. Yeah. This is not a popular topic, people. Yeah. It isn't. No. You know and I also, I think too, Sylvia, one thing that you and I did for each other was create a safe space to ask questions. Oh, and yeah. I would really love to see this program be a safe space for people to realize they're not alone. Uh, you and I, I remember the time I called you and said, this just happened with a, a client and I'm feeling mm -hmm. really weird. Can I walk you through this? And you mm -hmm. were a fantastic ear uh, to listen to and to just troubleshoot together. So um, I'm really excited to bring this subject, which I, I still think is quite secret uh, to to a live freaking YouTube channel every Thursday. So uh, I yeah, secret is the word. And also, I mean, tons of things I've been telling you for a past week. My gremlins oh. are coming up, Jenny. My who am I to talk about money? I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a business yeah. coach. I'm yeah. an entrepreneur. Uh, yeah. uh, but who am I to be yeah. talking about this? And yeah. But I think the more we talk about it, yeah. the more everyone else is going to say, hey, yeah, I totally resonate with that. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, and there's lots of it. There's money in your spouse. There's money in your kids. There's money in your job, yeah. money in your business. I mean, we've yeah. got episodes for the next three yeah. years, people. We I do, mean, really. <laughs> We do. And every time we talk, we come up with another idea and we're going to try and parcel them out. Um, so let's dive in, Sylvia. What do you say? We want to talk about finding your holes today. Um, every episode, just FYI, we'll have a little bit of a takeaway at the end, uh, food for thought, let's call it, things for you to think about. Mm -hmm. um, you and I talked about this idea of kind of co-coaching each other through things as a model. Um, we've talked a little bit about this aha moment when Sylvia and I were on our call. Well, it was a pandemic. Tell experience. us about the aha moment. Okay. So uh, pandemic hits. Sylvia and I have girlfriends all across the world. Hey, let's get together Saturdays at 1030 just to check in with each other. And we're all in very different places in our lives. So we hop on the call at 1030 and we, first of all, it's what a bonus, right? Some of mm. my, my girlfriends I talk to, but often it's one-on-one. -on -one. So we all figure out how to use Zoom. We all show up. How beautiful to see some of our friends' homes. Like my friend Carrie lives in Spain. I never normally get to see her house and her, you know, what's going on with her family. So of course, Sylvia and I, we like to talk, right, Sylvia? Both of us. Both of us. And so we start talking about this money mindset and we're talking about how we're feeling about our money and uh, we both look at each other. Do you remember the moment? And I put yes. my hands up and said, we should do a show about it. 
And I, I, I have a couple of shows in my other business and I was like, yes, yes, right away without hesitation. But it was only after the, the other week I said, what did I get myself into? Again, the gremlins who, you know, and I started thinking of certain people, my coaches, what are they going to think about me doing a money show? Right. But that aha moment, it was, it was wonderful. And you're right. That pandemic brought us, brought us together together. and we've been chatting a lot and we do have different uh, stories. I mean, your spouse is still working mine, you know, both of our companies were hit by the pandemic. So, you know, different, uh, different experiences. Jenny, what does this, um, you know, we're talking about uh, 40 plus Mm-hmm. I think that's, you know, some people have said, but I'm not 40 yet. My colleague, she said, I'm only 37. Can I join? <laughs> of course you can. Of course, of you, course can. you can. But you why bet. are we focusing? It's not focusing on 40 plus. I just think the conversations are a little bit different when you're in your, you know, 20s. Mm-hmm. You might be talking about student loans instead of yeah. your retirement yeah. fund. Yeah. 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 Oh, retirement. Yeah. Different, that's different a good conversations. show. That good show. Good we'll put that on the show, the episodes. So um, when we talk about 40 plus, I think there is a time in women's lives uh, where they start to own their space or they either, they realize that something needs to change. Um, I love your story. Maybe we'll do a show on that about starting your business at 40, which I think is really exciting. Um, one of the themes for today is it's never too late. I see Stacy uh, showing up on our channel here with comments. And uh, Stacy and I have had many conversations. She's an inspirational person that's just trying to get us to talk and set some goals. Because I think also mm-hmm. at 40, you can't hide anymore, Sylvia, right? Well, um, I started my business, my first business at yeah. 40 years old. I yeah. had just had my third baby. I had them, my kids late. So a whole different world yeah. came up. And yeah. I had not thought about money and mindset before. Yeah. As an employee, I worked for a large uh, yeah. nonprofit. Yeah. Uh, in the education sector. And I not thought about that. I had a salary mm-hmm. all the time. It was going well. I didn't really think about my money stories until I had mm-hmm. my business. Mm-hmm. Now you work with no, uh, people in the nonprofit world raising yeah. money. And then we got to thinking about, oh my gosh, how do their yeah. money stories affect, you know, and these people yeah. are in high places, you know, high positions yeah, in their organizations. Yeah. How yeah. do their money stories affect their ability to raise money, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, to, yeah. and to own Go their ahead. space with oh, folks yeah. that are more comfortable with money, right? Yeah. We've all worked with a treasurer that it's very clear to them because it's on the Excel spreadsheet, right? So if you're not from that world, if you're not seeped in those stories of comfort with money, uh, it, it can be very debilitating, I, I think. Mm. And uh, so how can we uh, empower and embrace these, helping people get, women in particular at 40 plus get more comfortable. Usually there's a like reality check. Sometimes it's a divorce. Sometimes it's a business that's running, but not running at the efficiency level. Sometimes it's in my world as someone who's just been assigned the role of executive director or CEO. And it's like, okay, so I've built my my program budget before, but how do I build a a CEO or a whole organizational budget? And most importantly, how do I get it approved? And Mm. you talked about those gremlins, Sylvia. So who am I? I'm bad with money. My husband handles the money. I don't even know what's in my stock account. All those things start to chew away at us. And what it does, Sylvia, is it stops us from asking questions because nobody wants to be stupid. Right. Stupid. Right. You've asked me many times, Sylvia, just make an appointment with your advisor and go and chat about this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. you know, yeah. and yeah. then there's feelings of shame around it. Yeah. Now, money stories, you know, you might think, oh, well, I do have a lot of money in my bank account, but there are money stories. One of our uh, uh, gurus that we follow, uh, Denise Duffield, uh, she wrote mm-hmm. this great book and we're going to be talking about books uh, in future, mm-hmm. you know, in the future, but she's got mm-hmm. a great book called um, Get Rich, Lucky Bitch. Right. Love it. Yeah, and she she's a millionaire and she still works on her money mindset. So mm-hmm. don't think that this is something yeah. that be, yeah. it's not because we don't have money. Yeah. Uh, we have yeah. money. It's just being I want to up level. Yeah. And whenever we're getting yeah. into that zone of no longer being comfortable. Right. Yeah. There's a, it's because we are probably we are maybe up leveling. Things yeah. are changing. We're not comfortable anymore. Yeah. And this is where we need to go. So yeah. for me, having this show and yeah. talking yeah. about all of this, um, yeah. I see how comfortable I am now, right? Talking about this and sharing. But before I was like, oh my gosh, what do I have to say? And I've got so many things that I want to talk about with you. Yeah. So you picked up up on up level. So the example Mm. that I use in my world is, so you've always been grateful for the $100 donation. 
How do you mm. feel worthy for the thousand dollar donation, the ten thousand, the hundred thousand, the million dollar donation? If that is an energy level that of money and how your organization is perceived uh, in the community, mm. often that is fundamental. And I think if we can get our heads around some of those things that are happening from a uh, a money values perspective. So, you know, charities are famous for running from an expense-based approach, scarcity, right? Well, we only want to spend this much mm -hmm. rather than thinking of it from a business perspective of how, what's my return on investment on that expense. If I spend that, what can I expect to earn? Um, and right. those are all headsets because, and rightly so in the not-for-profit world, we're we're managing other people's money. It's charitable mm -hmm. donations or other people's dollars, which means we're especially careful and cautious with them, which is absolutely the right thing to do. Don't yeah, get me wrong. Definitely. But if we try to think of uh, money and as an abundant source, that's really hard for a lot of charities that there might yeah. actually be more money next year. Because one thing for people on the call that may not be living in the charitable world as much as I do, every year as a fundraiser, your budget resets to zero. So there's no automatic hello fresh client that just renews unless you have monthlies and even that requires of course work. Um, there's an, every year when you start your budget you're at zero and your work is uh, I would almost say painfully reflected in that target number. I always joke about in my fundraising coachings, we all are pretty comfortable as fundraisers with targets on our back. Like you have mm. to actually live and breathe that and I think and what I have seen through my years of coaching, is embracing your money story will help you be a better fundraiser, but it will also help you be a better spouse, a better parent, uh, a better saver, a better spender. Oh my gosh. But do you remember Jenny, we sat, we, Jenny and I had the same coach and I think she got us talking about money. Hats off to Sheila, if you're watching. Yep. Um, Sheila Cummins. Sheila Cummins, amazing woman. She got us thinking about money and Jenny and I cried in that session. We, we really did. did. We really both did. And um, mm -hmm. there was a point there, you know, as uh, you're talking about fundraisers, mm -hmm. but say you run your own business, you know, where do our money stories hit up? You know, there might be a money story when you're not able to ask your clients to pay you, right? There might be a money story if I'm only comfortable selling $97 things instead of $4,997 yeah. things, right? These are, this is when we call yeah. up leveling. And Jenny had that at one point she wanted to raise her prices, but there was this whole kerfuffle about, again, who am I to be charging this much? Mm -hmm. uh, who am I to be asking for that, mm -hmm. you know, $5 million donation? Mm -hmm. How yeah. do I do that? So it's, it, we've, we've come a long way from there. Oh my God. Actually doing this program, right? From an, And now this, like, I love the up leveling, up leveling. Yeah. So yeah. tell us, Jenny, a little bit about who you are and in relation to your money mindset, your own okay. money mindset. So uh, I thought I'd introduce myself through my money archetypes profile. So for those of you that have never heard that term before, um, a money archetype, there are eight of them, and we'll for sure be doing shows on those, Sylvia. Uh, there are different profiles of how, people's relation, how people relate to their money. So uh, I am an alchemist. So what does that mean? An alchemist is someone who has a love-hate relationship with money. In other words, we know it's important, but we kind of resent the fact that we have it because alchemists care about ideas. We believe in the greater good. We're way more interested in driving a movement, which this show fits into so well, Sylvia, like it's mm. interesting, um, rather than like charging or billing or invoicing or whatever. It's almost like a petty annoyance to us. And so I can look back through the seeds of my money story particularly the musician piece, right? Because when you go into music, you don't go in for the money. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. And I wouldn't change a thing, by the way. I no, have to, I, I just not. want to put a plug out there for all art students and musicians and um, faculty of arts students. You guys rock. It's a, it's an approach. And parents of musicians. You might have <laughs> children wanting to go into yeah. music and you might be saying, oh no, yeah. you know, my parents yeah. never told me that. They said, go for it. Yeah. Just go for it. And hats yeah. off to them for doing that because they yeah. could have said, oh, you know, did, did you think about the money? And I would have yeah. said, oh no, the money. I love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so I've always sort of held on to that kernel. And I really do believe that uh, what my passion in not-for-profits is, is people coming together, right? Just the way we, the way we do in music. So I am an alchemist and um, I, I'll just finish with my money, my money mantra, I guess, and I'll pass it over to you, Sylvia, is um, when I, the more good I do in the world, the, the more, wait, the more good I do, the more good I can do in the world. So mm -hmm. equating my money success with being able to write a bigger check, 
being able to help somebody else, being able to get these messages to somebody else. And that's really helped me uh, charge what, what my worth is, what my value is, also to stand behind um, my products and my approach, which isn't for everybody, right? So, mm, And it shows in your volunteering too. Like you yeah. are president of your uh, tennis association, your tennis club, uh, and all of the other volunteer work over mm. the years, right? It's mm. that wanting to help others be able to up level, make more money mm. so that they can give more as well. I think that's really important for you mm. and, uh, and mm. the archetype. I'm a different archetype. Uh, I'm a connector. Uh, and it's shown throughout my career. Uh, that... I make relationships for me are more important than money. Uh, mm -hmm. But the way I make money is through relationships. So it, it's connecting people. Uh, like this year, right before the, the COVID-19 hit, I was yeah. starting this networking series called yeah. Girls Biz Night Out. We had one of them. It was great. And then it fell flat, right? Can't, <laughs> can't get together anymore. And I was like, oh, no. Uh, but I've had jobs where I was... Uh, uh, director of the Junior Chamber of Commerce here in Montreal, where I would, you know, we yeah. were 1400 young business people, 18 to 40 years old and getting them together in events yeah. and you and me. So a schmoozer, basically, that's what I feel like I'm, I'm telling myself in my business, definitely, you know, those deep mm -hmm. relationships. So in my coaching business, getting to know my clients mm -hmm. on a really personal level mm -hmm. to be able mm -hmm. to share with them and to help them grow is super, mm -hmm. super important for me. Yeah. Uh, but it does have its negative side too. Yeah. Uh, the connector, yeah. the connector believes that someone, you know, your money situation will always be taken care of yeah. maybe by someone else. Yeah. You don't really necessarily have to look at it yourself. And that's totally me. That's totally it, me. It will, it will work itself out. It works, real, it'll right? work itself out. Like, how many times have you told me that on a phone call? Yeah. It's be fine. It'll work itself it'll out. It'll be fine. It'll right? be fine. It's true. It's true. It's true. Let's delve into finding your holes. Okay. Sounds good. And we want to um, know, is any of this resonating with yeah. you? Please put your, you know, we'd love, I see there's some comments here. We've got people from all over. Yeah. Uh, we've got Louise, Louise yeah. here and Lauren, uh, Diane, Diane. And Stacey. So wonderful to be sharing yeah. this with you. What are your money stories? Please yeah. pop them in so we can, yeah. we can feel that we're not the only ones. Yeah. I know we're not the only ones. So Sylvia, you talked about holes. Um, I did. That's yeah. my, I coined that term. Yeah. Right? And we'll I love it. About and that. And uh, um, I think, so my holes, I'm going to own one. Uh, and there's probably friends of my kids or my kids on this call. So I'm being bold here, Sylvia. My escape when there's holes and things I don't mm. want to deal with is to just work harder. Just right. go escape into work. And mm -hmm. work is clear. There's inboxes. There's emails that tell me what to do. And I don't have to process anything in my house. So that's actually been a hole for me is... Uh, the pandemic doesn't give me because we didn't have any other activities. I just kept working and working and working, mm -hmm. and it's a bit mm -hmm. addictive and obsessive. I'm gonna, I'm I gonna share that, that with you. Does anyone else? Is there anyone else finding that? I mean, I'm yeah. uh, as a business owner, yeah. there's always something. My 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 son says, "Mom, just do what you you needed the work you needed to do today, and you can stop, and we can go to Grandma's pool." And I was like, I was like, "Well, no, because as a business owner, my to do list is like never. It's always ongoing." And he said, "What?" And I, was, I didn't want to turn him off of entrepreneurship, but yeah. it is, it's an, an ongoing to-do list. Yeah. So what's the your hole? holes? My holes have been the cash flow. Mm -hmm. I have realized this pandemic with, uh, I run two businesses mm -hmm. and uh, one is a, is a birth doula agency and doulas mm -hmm. are no longer admitted in the hospitals. And, um, yeah. you know, that just was cut, cut right mm -hmm. out of us for uh, up until now. Mm -hmm. So cash flow and financial structures have been my holes. And I just found, you know what, these holes, Jenny, you, mm -hmm. you know, that workaholic side of you, it's always there. You're always mm -hmm. off to one meeting or another and whatever. Yeah. And that can yeah. be a, a friction in the yeah. household or friction within your yourself. Uh, me, yeah. my cash flow has always been, so the, the pandemic is not, un, it's, it's uncovering them, right? Yeah, agreed. It's, totally. I think you, the word you use was accentuating the yeah. problems that are already there. Yeah. Yeah. So we want you, this takeaway is, yep. you know, start thinking while we're talking here about yep. what holes is this uncovering? It might not just be, it might not be in work or business, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, I, I think, I think one of them is relationships, if I may, like, mm. you know, you're with your spouse or whatever. Steve normally travels a lot and we're home together, um, you know, hanging out in the kitchen, bumping into each other at coffee time. We have a new coffee maker. It's so awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that, it puts strains on different kinds of relationships. So, and with your kids too, 
Uh, and you know, if you're listening to this, you know, I can't believe we're almost at 1220. So yeah, we, we gonna, said we do 20 minutes. It's I like, know. Guys, we have so much more to talk about, but a um, couple things for you to think about after this episode, where are your holes? Where are the places you've been dropping the ball in your life, mm. in your work fundraisers out there? Have you been avoiding those calls, right? Of reaching out. What are the places that need a little bit of tending? Um, I think the other thing I want to bring up for today, Sylvia, is this idea that it's never too late. No. So, yeah. So, I feel that way sometimes. Yeah. And then I remember myself, Martha Stewart only started her, you know, her big yeah. enterprise when she was yeah. like 47. Yeah. You know, yeah. so That's it is amazing. not too late. It is not too late. Yeah. Sometimes I feel it, it is, but you're right. Yeah. And then there will always be more holes. I think that's another really important uh, phrase because there, once you solve, once you work on these things and you up level, there's going to be more guys. I hate to tell you that um, you'll always be working towards something, but I kind of like that idea too, because it's never dull, right? I wouldn't want it fixed. It's true. No, it, it's like my new kitchen that you can kind of see in the background. It's not like I finish it and it's done. It's like, no, mm. I keep tweaking and playing and adding things. And that really can be a great joy, I think, too. So, um, and, you know, this show, as we go forward, I'd like to sort of see it as a mirror. So every week checking in, looking in the mirror, listening to Jenny and Sylvia, uh, prompting you with some ideas about money and your comfort level or not mm. with money. You don't have to tell anyone you're watching this show. Uh, that's why well, no, we do want them to tell them that <laughs> they're do. watching this show. I want you to share with all your friends because deep down, everyone's got something about money. Yeah. I was talking to another yeah. uh, client at one point. She goes, I, it's not, I don't have, I have shame mm. and I feel guilty because I come from money. Like yeah. I've never, I've never yeah. wanted in my life. So it's yeah. a, so yeah. interesting. Yeah. And, and we're going to delve into, you know, all of this as we go mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So Sylvia, why don't you tell us about next week's show and then I will close this out. Well, next week, we're really going to delve into our money stories. We mm. both have different, very, very different money stories. And I was reading a book this week or listening to a book. Uh, and she was saying we cannot heal our money stories mm. without delving into our ancestors' mm. money stories. So what do our parents, what, you know, what are the, what are their stories? And my yeah. parents have quite, um, I mean, all our parents have their, yeah. their stories and it comes from their own parents. And, you know, where does that come from and how we can't heal our stories until mm. we, mm -hmm. uh, we, we look into our own. So that's what mm. we're, that's where we're going. That's Sounds where we're going to start. Start thinking about your own stories. We'd love to hear some of them. Yeah, for uh, sure. All of them. So I love that folks are talking about Colonel Sanders at 65 starting his business. What a wonderful I did not reference. know that. Thank I you. did not know that. And I love that Margot says that she that we make her brain hurt because I know exactly what she <laughs> means. And I think that's actually a great thing, Margot. It's the stretching, I'm sure, and expanding. Um, so unfortunately but this this is all the time we have for today guys you have been a part of a very special thing here today you have sylvia our pilot episode is about to be closed out i know i'm gonna cry i know, so I, know. Fun. It was oh, I, great. Too. Um, I want to remind you all to subscribe uh to share it with your friends please put your comments in the comment section we'd love to see them we will be picking up on them to um you know fuel our next shows happy to follow us please let us know what was your aha moment moment around money or have you had it yet um and what are the mm. holes in your stories um put them in the comments we know we're not the only ones sylvia so with no that, definitely not and we are here to help you fix them as well mm -hmm. i mean let's be honest i mean yeah. you work with an Fundraisers, Jenny can be found at uh, chavender.com. Yep. I can be found at sovibrant.com, so-vibrant.com. Awesome. And we really look forward to sharing our money stories with you next week. Yep. Every Thursday, 12 o'clock, we'll be here. We'll be here live. Thank thanks. you so much, thanks, everyone. everyone. Really Have a appreciate wonderful it. day. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, thanks, Erica. Mm -hmm. too. Bye. Bye, everyone.